Welcome today to Speak Love. We are so glad that you are with us. We are coming to you from Champion Church in Yuma, Arizona, where this is a church of unconditional love. Like we like to say, when your tires hit our parking lot, you've entered a guilt-free zone, but you also entered a zone of strength and of power where we see God's miracles every single day. So welcome, Champion Girls. We are live today from the Champion House. <laughs> You know, champion means one who stands and fights for another. It does not mean we are all winners here. We, it means that a winner stood in the ring and fought for us. And then once we win because of Jesus, now we in turn go and we fight for others. And so today we stand with you today, whatever you're going through, and we fight for you. We pray for you. We want to encourage you. We want you to know that Jesus is here and anything can happen when he's here. So today, if you have your Bibles, I want you to take, go with me right now to Matthew 9, Matthew 9, and we're going to go back between Matthew, Mark. Why is it that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John also uh, often will have the same stories? Because I feel like y'all needed to know three times and four times and however many times it's all repeated, how it all really happened. It's like, you hear it here, and you hear it here, and you hear it here. And by the time you get down to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, by the time you get to Acts, you've heard it several times, the same story, because God is trying to get something through to his people, and he wants you to hear a story. So today I'm going to take you in Matthew 9, 20. There is a certain woman, and she is on her way because she is suffering with an issue. And it tells us in Matthew 9, 20, a certain woman, or suddenly a certain woman who had been suffering for 12 years. 12 years is a long time, y'all, to be suffering. Because in year one, you're like, okay, well, this should get, get, get better. I mean, I had a five and a half year illness. Now, I wasn't like on my deathbed that entire five and a half years. But there were three specific seasons in that five and a half years where I almost died. Well, the one time for sure, the other two times were surgeries where you felt like you were dying, but I made it through. And then the recovery for surgery three took a really long time. So I know what it's like when it's like everybody who you meet, Leslie knows she's been in this season. Many of you have had long-term illnesses. Everybody wants to go, oh, how are you? Oh, are you okay? Oh, and you're like, there's just comes a point in time where you're like, I don't want people's pity. I don't want people's compassion anymore. I want to get well. I want to be healed. I want to be standing strong. I don't want to feel like my little ankles are shaking in my high heels because I'm so weak from everything I'm going through. I want strength. And you come to a point where you're like, you know what? I need to do something about this. It's been 12 young, long years. Can you imagine the depression? Those of you are who are who are suffering through very long illnesses, my heart is with you. I know what it's like to feel like it has been so long. When is this going to end? And I want you to know Jesus is with you. My heart breaks for your suffering. I have been in suffering. I have been with people who are suffering. I was with my mother in her last days while she suffered. And suffering is a difficult thing. But I know that those of you who love Jesus, who suffer, you know, and I'm here today to remind you that Jesus is with you in the suffering and he suffered too, right with you. And there'll come a day when you're done on this earth and your suffering will be over and there will be the most beautiful blessing for you in heaven. There will be crowns, a crown of life. Those of us who have endured will have the crown of life. I go and prepare a place for you that where I am, you will come. I will receive you unto myself. There are many mansions there. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you, Jesus says. So those of you who are suffering, you just hold on. Because if the healing isn't here on earth, most beautiful one, the healing will be in heaven. So we stand with you now in the name of Jesus to strengthen you. Because a certain woman in the Bible represents a certain beautiful person. And it's you today individually you you are a special person you are that suddenly person and suddenly there was a person who needed jesus and it can happen suddenly or you can be in your mess and realize after 12 years i'm so sick and tired of doing this on my own right now there's a big kind of like buzzword and buzzwords i've watched them for 60 years and just a little while I'll be 60 years old 
I've watched buzzwords come and buzzwords go. And one of the buzzwords right now is inner healing. Remember when it was all about self-love? Oh, self I'm like, we all need some self-discipline. We all need some self-blessing. We all need some get ourselves up and get some life done. And I get self-love. I'm not, I'm not against it. I'm just saying that was the big buzzword for a while. Now the big buzzword that I hear often is inner healing. And Jesus cares about our inner healing. Because if we don't get inner healed, we carry that around and we argue with our spouse. And what we're really doing is arguing with the person that abused us. Or we're arguing with somebody who left us. Or we're arguing because we feel like that person's going to abandon me. That person's going to leave me. And we carry the trauma around in our bodies, like they say we all do. And I know I can get triggered at certain times. And then I have to remind myself, uh-uh, I am a certain woman who is looking for Jesus and I found him. So I don't have to rely on only my counselor to get me through, only my medication to get me through, only when God finally does this to get me through, only when I finally lose the weight to get me through, only when I get a certain job to get me through, only when then I will feel good enough to receive inner healing that I desire. Today, God wants you to know he's here for you for inner healing and outer healing, upper healing, downer healing, wide healing, whatever kind of healing you need. Once he comes into your life, the power of God strengthens you supernaturally. So it's not just us trying to find things on earth. What YouTube video could I watch? And I love you too. I'm all right now. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the following. Thank you for the subscribing. I love you all. But it's not just where's my uh, and and I I need to get money together for my counselor and, and then I gotta go and then and it's it's like can we just let the world be the world right now and turn our eyes because God has you behind this screen for a reason turn our eyes upon Jesus look full in His wonderful face and the things on earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and His grace. Because once he enters into your bodies, it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. It will quicken your mortal body and it will help you to overcome what's been done to you. Because I fully believe when we're children, just like this lady that we're talking about, when we are children, the enemy senses immediately what you're called to. Instantly. And he will set you up. I just recently heard one of the most famous pastors ever. He is so distinguished and his voice is deep and he's well followed and he's well loved. And he has an amazing church in the biggest city ever. Phenomenal. He was sitting down on a stage in a chair, tears streaming down his face, confessing for the very first time how as a child he was abused by his mother and by a man from the time he was three until he was either seven or 10. I can't remember what it was, but for years He had been carrying this around, God bless him. And if you think that that's unusual, when they had the cameras in the back of the room going forward, and he said, who else in this room would say today, you've been abused, you've been been abused. The hands absolutely went up everywhere. Couldn't see their faces, only the back of their heads, but hands went up. And one person I saw put both hands up like this, like, here I am. It looked like a man, like, here I am. And so the enemy comes with a target on us immediately to take us out and take us out. And he starts with self-doubt. You're not good enough. See, because this and that happened to you. See, look at you. See, and then he'll line you up for somebody to just come along and agree with that nonsense in your life. Oh, yeah, you're this. Oh, you flunked that great. Oh, you're, oh, yeah. And you'll have an auntie that goes, well, you know, if you didn't eat so much or whatever, you got people in your life to agree with the negativity and it reinforces it and it reinforces it. And the next thing you know, most beautiful one, your inner self is beat up. It's torn up. It's bleeding. It's hurting. And now when it grows up in a big body, it like, it's going to react and it's going to react. But I want you to know something. God has given us power to overcome that inner healing. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. So a certain woman, she had been suffering for 12 years with a consistent bleeding. And that, to me, the Bible that would talk about something so intimate as feminine bleeding is really important for women to hear today. 
because Jesus cares about our intimate issues. And our intimate issues and who we are as a society is under so much attack right now. And before God, before this, the writer of this beautiful, before Matthew even knew about what we were going to face in 2023, before any of that, Jesus was already ministering and talking to the intimate issues that women would face. And he wasn't afraid to talk about them. He didn't turn his back and go, oh yeah, I got what that is. Let's keep going, everybody. Let's keep walking. No, he stopped and said, I'm going to make light of what this woman has been through because down through the ages, women need to know that their savior cares about their inner healing, their inner self, what they've been through, the abuse women are going to face. Jesus saw with his own eyes the oppression that was upon women. He saw with his own self the longest recorded story in the Bible is the woman at the well. Why was that the most recorded story? Because I think the longest recorded, I think we all need to know, know that Jesus came as a renegade. Jesus came knowing what he was here for, and that was he set the captives free. And women, were in captivity, but he was not going to treat her like a second class citizen because she had an intimate bleeding issue. And some of us are bleeding in our hearts today. Some of us are bleeding with pain today. And Jesus is here to turn around to you and say, who touched me as if he didn't know? Let's keep going. And it says here that she came up behind Jesus. Don't you love that? He didn't say, everybody come forward to an altar call today. He didn't say, look at me face to face. She couldn't do that. She probably didn't feel good enough. But if I can just go behind him, if if he doesn't see who I really am, if he doesn't know what I really want, because he's a man. And now if he does touch me, he's going to have to do the Leviticus law, which means he got to go down. He got to wash. He can't go anywhere till sunset. He got seven days. He, got to book. he has all these things he has to do. And I don't want to steal his ministry from him because he's got so much to do. And if I don't touch his body, and maybe if I only touch something on him, I won't make him unclean. All I want is my miracle. All I want is for Jesus to see me. And today Jesus sees you right where you're at. You may feel like you are the worst of the worst. Oh my gosh, you're not. You're so beautiful. I was just speaking at a conference in California. It was for all the women, the Dream Center and the Lighthouse Center and all these recovery centers bring all their girls together. And it was so beautiful and so amazing. In fact, one girl that Johnny was comes and he gives them all an outfit and they get their makeup done in the morning, get them new high heels on. And they all look so beautiful. and They all stood up so straight and lovely. But the altar time came and there was a certain woman who needed Jesus. She was at that altar. She had been through hell and back. She had been through a rough, rough life and she got crying. And I was up there at the altar with her and I said, oh, Lord Jesus, she's going to need a napkin. She needs a tissue. She needs something because them tears are coming down and she's got them big old false eyelashes on those gorgeous lashes. And if she, them waterworks don't slow down, them lashes are coming up. So I went over, I gave her a little tissue and she's tapping. And then glory be to God, she got the spirit of Jesus all over her. She put her hand up in the air and she bent over and she started crying with everything within her, all her intimate challenges everything she's been through. She's living in a home. She probably had her kids taken from her. She's probably served some time in prison. I don't know what her issue was, but she had probably a good 12 years of it. And she was bending over and she was crying for Jesus so hard. Honey, them lashes were coming off. She didn't care. She just peeled those things off the rest of the way. And she kept on a crying before Jesus. And sometimes that's how we get our healing is when we're willing to come forward at the altar, give it all to Jesus and quit trying to step it all down, look all pretty, put our, uh, our little lashes on, get our lippies just right. And I try to get right. I try to look good. I try to do it all. But won't tell you what, I might just become a little bit more undignified after my disciple sister who loves Jesus so much She was willing to get a little bit undignified for her Savior, for her to have a healing at the altar. And that's how Jesus works. He wants you to step out of yourself and do something more. When the altars are open at church, come forward. You need to run forward. And that's how I found Pastor Stephen celebrating 38 years today. We, You see a beautiful love story, but y'all didn't see me at the altar. 
on Sunday nights crying my eyes out. On Sunday nights giving it all because we had altar night. You know, we we sing those kind of songs and the sister so and so would get it. The spirit, it was awesome. It was wonderful. I go back to those days right now. Give me a dose of the Holy Ghost. Y'all have been watching the revolution on uh, Netflix. And somebody, beautiful girl, said to me today, I wish we could do that again. I said, we could. But the church has to be willing to do it. It can't be just three of us. It has to be the people who have been so broken because that's who we all were. Little hippies. I was a little hippie chick. I was tiny. But if I'd have been just maybe another year or two older, I'd have been really hippie girl. But I tried to be a hippie girl. But I fell in love with Jesus. I fell in, and all them hippies are spinning around and loving Jesus. We all had our shoes up. We're all crying our eyes out. We're all g- dancing in the spirit. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has. That's where you find Jesus. We could do it if we were willing. That's what I always say. There's revival. Don't tell me it's breaking out here and there. Oh, it broke out in you a long time ago. Y'all got to be willing to come down to the altar and be here at two in the morning. You're still going at it at three in the morning. You're still going at it at four in the morning. And somebody goes, what the heck is going on in there? Oh, they all still. And then the teenagers all start texting and they start Instagramming and they start TikToking and everything else talking. And all of a sudden the news gets out and now they all show up at 7 a.m. for school and go, glory be to God. They're all still singing. Yeah, because there were some people. Then they come in, they join in and they start to tap into the flow that is all always there. This woman, she said to herself, oh, dear Lord Jesus, I'm getting behind him. And she reached through the crowd and she said, all I need to do is touch the talent. It's a little thing that hangs off. This is very exaggerated and big. It was not this big, but it was. And she thought, if I can just touch that, if I can just touch the tassel, the talent that's hanging off of the Messiah's body. I'll be me. And then I won't disrupt him. I won't bother him. But I'll be healed. He can keep going on his way and it'll all be good. She said to her inner self, isn't that beautiful when you think about it? How Psalms 139 says, you created my inmost being. In verse 21, Matthew 9, 21, it says, she said to herself, And I say, I think that is so beautiful right there. She said to herself, her inner self that only God knows, that only you know what came to hurt you and destroy you. Only you know what came against you. Only you know the abuse you suffered. Only you know who left you. Only you know what the divorce felt like. Only you know about the child that's dealing with a challenge. Only you know what you know, what you know, your inner self knows She said to herself inside, she said so quietly, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, if I can only touch his talent, if I can only do those things, a holy thing, just a holy thing, Jesus, because I'm not holy. I'm not whole. I'm broken, God. Nobody wants to be around me. I've spent all my money. It says that she spent everything on doctors. She tried every potion. She tried every YouTube video. She tried every course to take online. She, she bought the book. She, she went to the, to the gurus. She's tried everything for 12 years. It's not working. I'm not holy, God. If I was holy, this wouldn't be happening to me. Like in the movie, when we watch The Beautiful Chosen, and they portray this story. And she goes down and people want to give her their washing. Why? She says, if I'm down at the water, nobody's going to see I have this issue because I'm in the water all the time. And then somebody spotted what was going on in the water. And now she probably thinks, I got to move again. I got to get away again. I got to get away from this place. Nobody loves me. Nobody wants me. Everybody's abandoned me. God, please kill me. Take me out of this. I can't do this anymore. I don't want to be like this, Jesus. But you know what? I'm going to go find that Messiah. He's walking. He's going. And I'm going to grab that tassel. I am. I'm going to go find that tassel. Come on. Does anybody, anybody like me? It's like, I got an idea. I'm doing it. No, I'm, I don't care. No, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to find Jesus. I'm going to grab that tassel. And if I can just get behind him, because I'm not good enough to be in front of him, I'm not good enough to talk to him. But if I can get behind him, I'm going to go. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to touch that and I will be made whole. 
another version says, and the legacy standard Bible says, if I can touch him, then I will be saved from this. And that's what happens when you touch Jesus. Salvation comes to you. When you touch him, salvation comes to you. And I want you to know something. When I was so desperately sick and I felt so bad about myself and I hated who I was, sometimes I would close my eyes and I would just see myself holding on like that woman in the dust being dragged by Jesus. No, I'm not going to let go. Jesus, I'm not going to let go of you. I can't right now because if I let go, I'm going down. So if you don't mind, Jesus, can you at least drag me along? And Jesus said, no, that's not good enough. It's time for you to get some inner peace with your inner being and your inner self. It's time for you to get some inner healing and know who I am. My key, what I got out of, how I got out of my inner hell was being thankful. And that may sound small to you until you're a little racked bodies cut up from here to here and you got a bag on your side and your bowel's been removed and your wig's hanging in the closet and you're at your lowest point and you look over and you put your feet in the two slippers and say, thank you, Jesus. And the Holy Spirit fills your room. And I find the key to absolute inner healing for me was to live in the moment and be thankful in the moment. Instead of looking at what's been done to me, how hard it's been. I can't put my babies to bed tonight. I can't, I can't. And and looking at the past and going over it and over it and reliving it and reliving it in color and in smell and in taste and in touch. You have to get to a point where you say, no more. I'm only thinking about today. I'm only gonna think about you, God, and where we're at. And I'm gonna hold on to your tassel. I'm going to hold on to the fringe of your garment, Jesus, and I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be healed today. Jesus turned to her and he said, take heart, my daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has healed you. It has made you well. And in Mark 5, 29, it says, immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt it in her body. You can feel it in your body. I know I did when I got my miracle of how to get through my inner healing, my inner hell, my inner feeling picked on, my inner feeling like, how could this be happy? I feel so sorry for myself. I want to tell you something. Woo! And I felt that it hit my body. I, it like slapped me upside the head. And I said, Jesus, you and I, we got more to do. This can't take me down and take me out. I got to raise my boys. I, I got to do what God has called me to do. I have a father-in-law who's an evangelist all over the world and it ain't going to go out that Brother Bloomfield's daughter died because of blah, blah, blah. No, what glory, what glory, what glory. I'm going to hold on to the hem of Jesus's garment today. And I encourage you to hold on to. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt it in her body. At once Jesus realized and he felt power had gone out of his body and he turned to the crowd and he said, who touched me? You don't think Jesus knew who touched him? Of course he knew, but he wanted to make a point loud and clear. Everybody look, it was a woman with an intimate challenge that I'm not afraid of. What do you mean Jesus who touched you? Look at all these people. But Jesus kept looking and the woman came out in fear. It was me, Jesus. I touched you. What does Jesus say? He says, go in peace. Has healed you today. I want to speak peace over you. Peace over your inner self right now. Can, as you hold on right now, you may say, I don't, I don't know if I believe all this Jesus stuff. Give it a chance. Because if you don't give it a chance, what happens is this. You never sense the power of God because you've never been open to the power of God. You've only been, oh yeah, that's for, oh yeah, oh yeah, you know, it's just a crutch. No, 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 no. When you actually surrender yourself to Jesus, when you say, Jesus, come into my life, the power that enters your body quickens you. That's why it says in the word, she felt her body instantly be touched. That's how Jesus works. It's instant today. And that's what he will do for you if you will reach out with your life and say, Jesus, I want to give you a chance. I want to read you a couple of scriptures as we close. John 14, 27 says this, peace, Jesus says that I leave with you. I don't give it to you like the world gives it to you. So don't let your hearts be troubled 
and don't be afraid. Jesus is telling you, with me, it's not like my, my girlfriend preached a great message at the conference, uh, beautiful Chrissy Miles, and she was talking about peace, how it's like, it's different than the world. Oh, be peaceful. Oh, isn't it a peaceful, babe? It's different. It's supernatural. It's Holy Spirit filled peace. It's the peace that you receive that you can say, I don't know how I can walk through this death, but somehow Jesus is getting me through it. I don't know how I could get through this divorce, but somehow the peace of God is on my life and I can face this thing. Those are the beautiful people in Hawaii. We pray this kind of peace over you that the world is just so upset for you, but there's some of you who have the peace of God that know one day you're gonna be with your loved ones. You don't know how, but somehow your savior is gonna get you through this. We stand with you today. And 2 Thessalonians 3, 16 says, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in all ways, not just some ways but in all ways. So we want to pray for you now before we let you go. And we want to speak love over you. We want to speak Jesus over you. Those of you who have known Jesus for a long time and you're suffering and you have a lot of inner challenges going on, we just speak the peace of God over you, the love of God over you. Don't you give up. Don't you feel like this is the end for you. You trust Jesus to the very end. And those of you who don't know him, today's the day for you to say, you know what, I'm gonna be bold and strong and I'm gonna say yes to Jesus. Let's pray together, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on girls, I feel the spirit of God. Let's press our hands towards this camera right now. In the name of Jesus, we speak his love, his peace, his presence, his grace, his mercy, and that spirit that raised you up from the dead, Lord Jesus, that it will dwell inside of the people. It will come into the lives of the people today who are trusting you for the first time. And those of us who've decided, I need to trust Jesus again. And for those of us who say, Jesus, I'm gonna keep trusting you. Jesus, the same spirit that raised you from the dead, may it dwell in you now and quicken your mortal body. Remind your mortal body that you are more than a conqueror. Remind yourself who Jesus Jesus Christ is. Remind yourself that you are never alone, that the Spirit of God walks with you. You deserve His love. You deserve His blessing. You deserve everything that He has for you. So receive it now in the mighty name of Jesus. We all said together, come on now. Amen. 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 We love you. We're praying for you. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Thank you for your messages. Thank you for all the love. We love you and we're excited to be with you again. Bless you.